Hello and welcome to After Scientology, Straight Up and Vertical, the show where Tony Ortega and I break down uh, recent events as reported by Tony and my commentary uh, coming at it from uh, culty, coercive control stuff. So, hey, Tony, uh, thanks for being on the show here. Hey, Chris, how are you, man? Ah, oh, man, what a week. I have been sick as a dog this week. I, you might be able to hear oh. it a little bit. Yeah, it sucked. I was, I mean, really, I don't get sick, and it was bad. But I'm, I'm back. I'm kicking. I got my steroids. I got my meds. I'm good to go. So, um, so you know, not super eventful week, but some interesting things happening. You did, I thought we might first talk about that podcast you did with Mark Bunker, because he had some very interesting things to say about, well, what's some of the fallout from this? Well, I did an interview with him. Yeah. Uh, the, the podcast was me by myself. But, um, yeah, at, you know, last time, Chris, we talked about Tracy McManus's big bombshell about that uh, we got uh, an email that was smoking gun proof that Sci- the Church of Scientology is – coordinating with these landowners, uh, Scientologist landowners, to take over even more of Clearwater. And they had some sneaky plan for the North Marina area. And uh, so what I was curious about then is what does Mark Bunker think? Because he's on the council. And so uh, I called him up. We talked about it. And he mentioned that this developed. So part of Tracy's story was she was identifying this ringer that they had brought in from out from out of town to pretend that he was the you know guy putting together this whole deal when really he was you know the front for these Scientologist landowners and in the email they had said he was going to be their white knight and he was going to make it look legit I mean right. this is their language this is their language it's, it's so rare you get a smoking gun like that Chris you can't believe it. And, of course, he denied it and everything. But I asked Mark about it, and he was saying, yeah, about a year ago, this developer, Rodney Riley, who appears to have no connection to the Church of Scientology, invited him to a restaurant to explain these plans for the North Marina area, which is, I don't know, about a mile or two north of the downtown. And he wanted to explain to him just all the nice things they were going to put in up there. And Mark knew that some of the properties that he was going to include in this development were part of those wealthy Scientologists snapping things up in the last few years. Right. And Mark's and Mark said to him, look, I don't have a problem with Scientologists wanting to improve things in this town. And he, he cited specifically Moises Agami, the Mexico city wealthy Scientologist who had come in and turned a derelict bank building into this sky view condo thing that, Tom Cruise has the top two floors of, right. and Mark is like, look, if a Scientologist wants to come in and make our town better with a new development, he doesn't have a problem with it. And he said it was Riley's reaction to that, that told him something was up because he said Riley was really, you know, it was what Scientologist? I don't know what you're talking about. And at that point, Mark said the guy was so disingenuous. Uh. He knew he knew there had to be something going on. Yeah. And then eventually, because, you know, An honest response would be, yeah, I'm working with these Scientologists who own land. They're interested in a nice new develop up here. Development, I think we're all on the same page. We just need a little city's help. And see, that was the thing was that what they want to do up there is kind of change the character of that part of town, which by city code, they're trying to keep this sort of old-fashioned look to it. And this Riley guy wants to come in and put in high-rise buildings and turn it into like, I don't know, a little mini Miami or whatever. And they can't do that without approval from the city. Okay. So I asked Bunker, so what's the upshot? And he said, I think the project's dead. And I said, really? And I I guess, Chris, the way it works is if you're going to do a project like that, you have to have a lot of approvals from various boards and city council members. You have to have votes to change the codes. And you know, whatever momentum they had going is just lost now. And not because there's anything wrong with the project. Okay, it might be a cool project for the city, but just that they were lying. So lying through their teeth. Yeah, and how can these city officials trust them now? Exactly. As you know, Mike Rinder had an interesting uh, suggestion. He said, you know, there's nothing that would keep Riley and these landowners from developing this 
in a certain way, getting it all ready for a grand opening, and then just handing it over to the Church of Scientology. And suddenly it's this whole expansion of the flag land base right. up to that area. So, I mean, you just can't, and, I mean, they could say they're not going to do that, but how could you trust them now? Exactly. So, um, so Mark thinks it's not going to happen. Um, and, uh, and the other little fun thing I got in that interview was I just, I found out that that next day he was being sworn in as vice mayor. Yes. And, <laughs> <laughs> and the readers love that. I have to point out, it's kind of an honorary thing and it's a rotating thing, but you know, as um, uh, Phil Jones was pointing out to me, you know, the the mayor had walked off. Frank Hibbert had just resigned in the middle of a meeting. Yeah. And so they brought back a former mayor to serve out those last 11 months just as sort of a steadying force. Well, that interim mayor's son yes, is connection. land attorney for Rodney Riley, the developer. Uh, I think it's wrong to say that this Brian guy is working for Scientology. He's working for the developer who's fronting right. <laughs> the Scientology <laughs> things. It's, it's not quite that direct. But uh, Bunker said they got the interim mayor to agree in writing that if there if anything involving his son comes up, he'll step aside. Well, if the mayor steps aside, then that means the vice mayor's in in you know in, in the lead. Yeah. I, I don't know how much I don't know how much power they have, but. If if Mark Bunker is going to be vice mayor, this is a pretty good time to be vice mayor. Exactly. With that with that, in, with that interim mayor having to step aside once in a while. So some interesting things at play in Clearwater. I still think the most important thing is that the city council has gone ahead with this development downtown. And it's going to put more life down there. And they're just ignoring the church as much much as they can. I think right. that's pretty smart. Yeah, I think so too. It's a little. It's. I mean, you just can't help but you know a little Game of Thrones in Clearwater. You know, it's. Uh, it is kind of funny, but I and I'll mention it again just because it's not just funny. It's true. It's Operation Normandy, the sequel. That's what's playing out right now. And anybody who doesn't take that seriously doesn't understand Scientology and what they're really about. I'm, it's not a joke. These guys take this stuff really seriously they never give up Chris, they don't right they don't they will not give up so uh mark is mark is in a prime position to be able to stop the shenanigans uh from the city level and i just don't know that they've been you know that 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 juxtaposition has ever been as goodly you know as well positioned for uh, you know for the government side to really get where Scientology is coming from, but Mark really gets it. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. And thank goodness for Trace McManus oh, and the Tampa Bay times, you know, yes. and not only, not only does she have this righteous piece, just very well written and, and, you know, dispassionate and just laying down the facts, which, you know, they can deny all they want, but they're right there in front of you. You know, naturally now Scientology has been smearing her, more than in the past and oh. uh what i noticed this time was that the executive editor of the tampa bay times responded to one of these scientology hate twitter accounts and stood up for her and i really like to see that i love to see an editor stick up for a reporter who's sticking their neck out and doing these things so that that made me feel like tracy's got some good backup there yeah. and that the paper values her and what she's doing because you know, this is the kind of thing that we know Scientology is doing it, but it's so great to have that piece of evidence. Here it is. You know, they they're coordinating these land grabs and they're just putting an even worse stranglehold on the city of Clearwater. Yeah, exactly. And it's really quite something. It's worth noting I because I, I even tweeted about it in the middle of the week, how how over the top these Twitter accounts are, how, just, I mean, oh. the smear on Tracy was gross. And of course the continued nonsense, you know, towards you and towards Leah, towards Mike, it's, I mean, it's just so outrageous that you, that I actually, you know, I ignore it for the most part. And I really do tell people, hey, leave it alone. Don't, don't engage yeah, with those guys. Yeah, don't, you know, it's just I, not worth the time. I always, I always feel so uh, good when I see one of my readers stick up for me and try to take them on but i also feel like God, don't bother it's just yeah. they have they have tiny followings they're just flinging mud at the wall 
Uh, you don't need to stick up for me. Um, but I understand why people get sick and tired of it and, and, you know, fire back. Yeah. But yeah, of late, it has really, really been heavy, particularly against Leah and Tracy. And I just hate to see it. Me too. Me too. But I, but I do have to kind of, at the same time, you just don't see this kind of blatant hatred coming out of any other religious organization or institution when they are when they're attacking critics or or trying to you know defend themselves or front fund themselves or whatever it's so obvious this is an unhinged group and i i, I got you got to thank him for that part at least you know <laughs> so now uh moving on there was an update in the masterson case this thing is rolling forward right. and apparently there was an attempt by the defense to delay until august or something and judge almedo's kind of put them in their place there was a full transcript on this what was the heart of that well here's the little piece of reality that's already shaking my head chris uh i know this goes to uh online on monday mm -hmm. so when i say today i'm saying monday the trial starts a week from today <laughs> oh Ooh. wow god oh. it's coming up fast man jesus a week yeah so um last tuesday i think there was a hearing and well, there was a hearing on Monday and Tuesday. Well, Monday, Monday they had a hearing, and then Tuesday, Judge Almeida had these rulings, and I published, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the large majority of what she was saying and all the you know things she's, you know, Scientology was talked about last time. Scientology is going to be about, uh, talked about this time, except also, Claire Headley's going to be testifying. Yes. Last uh, last trial, there were the three main uh, complaining witnesses: the the Jane Doe's, uh, the three the three counts are based on but a fourth woman uh trisha vesey as another accuser was was allowed to testify last time this time trisha will be allowed to testify again and a fifth accuser kathleen jenkins the woman in toronto that i wrote about so just some really interesting rulings that went against a lot of what uh the defense was arguing right so then thursday a couple days later it was not on the docket before but there was suddenly this last minute hearing Cohen wanted to be heard and um, we checked with the court and they just said that the defense had asked to move the whole trial to August and they were denied. So since nothing changed, you just didn't see any press coverage of it. None of the, nobody's going to write a story saying there was a hearing and nothing happened. But I was curious about what Cohen had said mm -hmm. and how judge Almeida had ruled. And so I got a transcript and uh, this week, I published a large part of it. I described the rest. And uh, I don't know. I mean, my readers really appreciate that kind of, that level of detail. I do. They love. Yep. I mean, some some of it's a little, you know, out there. But Cohen essentially was saying that if you're going to bring in Claire Headley and if you're going to bring in uh, this new uh, expert uh, for drugging and another expert on drugging, and you're going to add Kathleen Jenkins, I need more time to prepare. Mm -hmm. But Omedo pointed out that even though Claire and Kathleen Jenkins did not testify last time, they were notified about the potential of them testifying before the trial even started last time. That's right. And that's, that's what, like six, eight months ago? Mm -hmm. So they've had plenty of time to prepare for these people. Um, but I thought, to me, one of the most interesting statements in that hearing was when Cohen said in the entire trial last time, I never uttered the word Scientology once in a question of witnesses. I think he eventually mentioned it in the closing statements, but yeah, yeah. He, he never asked a question using the word Scientology. And he said, now with these changes, I'm going to have to. And he didn't, he didn't explain what he meant, Chris. So that's kind of I'm looking. I'm interested in what does that what does that mean? Does that just mm -hmm. mean he's going to you know have to attack Claire all he can, or is he going to actually start asking the Jane Doe's about Scientology? I don't know. That's going to be very interesting. So yeah. that was uh, what the probably the thing I found the most interesting. And then, um, you know, Omedo just let him have it over the uh, times you know that because he kept saying, "Look, it's only been like." 
four months is the four or five months is the mistrial. Usually it takes eight. She's like, look, the char- these charges were filed in June 2020. You know, yeah. three years is plenty of time. Let's get this going. And the Jane and she, you know, the, the prosecutors had said, we talked to the Jane Doe's. They don't want to delay. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, throughout this thing, the judge has kept those women in mind. Right. And so, so uh it was interesting to me because leading up to last week, Cohen's filings had a real confident tone to them. I think he felt like, look, we got a mistrial last time. It's going to be the same testimony this time. He really seemed, especially if you compare his filings with the kind of stuff Tom Mesereau was filing a year and a half or two years ago, which was just like panicky craziness. Cohen's more like, okay, we got this. We got this, you know. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, he's acting like he's in big trouble because he doesn't have all this stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. Is that is it are they in big trouble? It's hard to know for sure until things start happening. I'm kind of in the mode now where we've only got a week less left, and I'm just not in a mood to speculate now. I'm ready to get there and start typing and see what people actually say. So yeah. Uh, and just just to review real quick, uh, what happens a week from now is they'll just start the jury selection. And what Judge Olmedo does is she brings everybody in, she gives them a speech about their re- responsibilities and their you know job they're going to do, has them fill out a questionnaire, and then they come back later to go in to start questioning. She does things very fast. She's expecting actual te- uh, opening statements and testimony to begin about. Uh, two weeks from today, Chris. Okay. So, All right. Yeah, things are going to be moving. Yeah, big time. And I, I, you know, obviously from a transcript, you can't necessarily hear tone of voice and that sort of thing. But I, I agree that Cohen was definitely a little like, uh, you know, in what, and I mean, because he was going on these long diatribes, and I thought it was interesting that he kept wording his arguments and well, I have to, and I have to, and I have to, as a as the defense attorney. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and then she points to the table and goes, well, you got this person, this person. This like You have a lot of other people behind you over there on that table, I see. It's not just you. You know, like, come on, give me a break. You guys are... Well, and the other the thing that she said that was a little surprising was, I mean, obviously he's got Karen Goldstein and she's sharp. Let me tell you, I've been in that courtroom with her. That woman is very sharp and I'm sure she's a great help to him in going through all this material. But she also mentioned Sean Hawley. Now, you know, I remember leading up to the first trial, Sean Hawley was busy with that Trevor Bauer stuff, and um, she just wasn't around. And at one point, I I asked the clerk, I said, has she taken her name off this case? And he said, no. And uh, I, but we didn't see her the whole first trial. But now, but now Judge Omedo has mentioned that, that Sean Hawley is still an official attorney for Danny Masterson. And she was pointing that out to Cohen, saying, "It's not all you, buddy. You got a team." And um, but does that mean she's going to show up in the second trial? I don't know. Yeah, be interesting. It, it will because it, it could be a whole other thing from from the defense side with that. The other thing I just noted during the week that was interesting to me was Ellen Barkin actually tweeted about this case. Oh, and, really? Yes, she did, and she said uh, she said she was she was tweeting in annoyance because somebody had called this mistrial, this new trial, a reboot. And she went out of her way to say, this isn't entertainment. This is a Mm. rape trial. Let's not treat it like that. This isn't a reboot. You know, this is a trial. And I was like, damn, Ellen, step up. Good. You know, she was, she's noticing, paying attention. I mean, obviously uh, I am, interested in in how things go i'm excited but i'm also i just feel so much for everybody involved especially these women but also the other witnesses that have to come in and do the whole thing all over again and they of course they're going to be thinking about ah if i say something slightly different is cohen going to go down my throat with it you know and it's just ah i'm sure it's just making everybody really nervous so yeah we'll see i can't believe it's almost here i know so fast this happens so fast Okay, and uh, and then I believe moving on here, you had something you wanted to. Uh, we're getting a live reaction right now, folks. I do yeah, not know yeah. what Tony's about to drop. So what do we well, got th- here? <laughs> this morning's story 
uh, has to do with at, at tonyortega.substack.com. This morning's story is about this disgraced, retired New York Police Department detective, Yanti Michael Green, who is accused of raping a woman he was supposed to be surveilling and is being sued over it. And in that lawsuit, they got a hold of his phone and in his phone found texts showing that he was also stalking Leah Remini and Jennifer Lopez for the Church of Scientology yep. and yours truly. He was also investigating me for Scientology. So we have an interest in this guy. We're just interested in this case, even though it's a little tangential to Scientology. So there was a hearing uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I hadn't mentioned it because not very much had happened. I saw him. Uh, they were getting things set up to uh, get some discovery going in that case and some depositions signed up and there was an objection because the judge just wanted the parties to set up for depositions. So the plaintiffs, the defendants and green had added some more names and they said, you can't do that. You can't have non-parties. You know, if you want the, and it was explained to him if you, because he's representing himself. If you want non-parties also to be deposed, you have to submit them and the court will decide whether to subpoena them or not. Okay. Thank you, judge. So uh, I, I kind of forgot about that because we're still waiting for a ruling in that case about something else. Well, a document was filed this week where Yanti Green has listed all the people he wants the court to subpoena so he can depose them. And it's 12 names now, not just two. And three of those names are Jeffrey Augustine, Karen De La Carriere, and Tony Ortega. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Ah, uh, what? To, 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 wow <laughs> really okay yeah yeah he's accusing me for example of taking money from the plaintiffs to write story def defamatory stories about him he's accusing karen of coming to court and and illegally taking photos of him in the courthouse what <laughs> Karen Dela Carey has not been to New York since the 90s. Right? Come on, man. That's just, ah, oh, dude. So, talk about desperate so, measures. Jeffrey and I have both been writing about this case. I mean, it's a fascinating case. And uh, he's convinced, I guess, that, you know, we would only do that if we were paid. And I can tell you on the record, no, I have not been paid a penny from those people. Uh, I write the story about them because it's interesting. You know, and, uh, isn't isn't projection interesting? <laughs> That's you know? right. He was paid. He was paid money to investigate me. So exactly. He I must be paid money to investigate him. But no. That's right. That's right. You can always tell what's up with these guys by the way they send their accusations out. You can always tell. So interesting. All right. So I, well. I don't. I don't expect the court to actually agree to his request and subpoena me. And if he tries it, I've got a very good attorney who knows how to look. I'm a reporter. I'm just covering the case. You can't drag me into it. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see what he tries to do. But I just thought you'd find that funny. Absolutely. I do. I mean, this guy. Ugh. And he's, I mean, talk about the lowest of the low, this dude. Oh, this guy. Oh, I mean, and, it, and, it, and again, I think we commented on this a couple of weeks ago, you know, the quality of the henchmen that get hired by Scientology oh. to do their dirty work are it's routinely bottom of the barrel stuff. I mean, this guy is a retired New York police department detective. I have seen him now in court numerous times. I have never seen anyone so flatly lie under oath on the stand right. and so badly. So, I mean, just, just, I guess he thinks this is his strategy that because he's a former cop, he can just say whatever he wants and, and he'll get away with it because okay. the things he says on the stand are, are just incredible. And he's at this point, he's getting away with not just allegedly raping a woman, but video, video recording himself doing it. Yeah. Whoa. That's just, and, he, and they can't, they can't find a prosecutor in Nassau County that wants to take the case. So it's just incredible. Damn. Wow. Well, thank you for that update. Uh, so I guess we're going to see what rolls out in this new week. I hope uh, I hope everybody had a good weekend because I think we're going to have an interesting week leading up to the beginnings of the uh, of this next trial. And 
ongoing shenanigans in Clearwater, and we'll see what else comes up. We had a, um, just as a, as a side note, there was a whole BBC thing on a cult, on a coaching cult that really right. blew up over there, this Lighthouse International group. And uh, it just there's, there's things blowing up kind of in the cult world in interesting ways, you know, uh, as we bring more awareness into this world on this stuff. So Scientology is kind of an interesting way of, I just wanted to kind of throw this to the audience a little bit. That it's, it's one of many. It's, a, it's kind of a little interesting case study in how these groups get away with what they do, but also how they get busted for what they do. So we'll see how things proceed here this, as, as we roll forward. Tony, thank you very much for taking right, the time Chris. today. You bet, man. All right, folks out there, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for coming around. I know you guys like this one. We're going to keep this one uh, shorter than than we have our other ones, but uh, but good on uh, coming around and subscribing. Share, like, subscribe to Tony, Substack, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.